Hi, this is Tucker, and in this video, I am going to review five tips you can use to define unfamiliar words using context clues. So when we read books, we encounter words we don't know. It happens to everybody, but really good readers pause when they hit a word they don't know, and they try to use the context clues. So what's going on in the sentence around the unfamiliar word to try to figure out what do they think it means to make kind of an educated guess about that word? So I want to share with you five things you can do when you encounter one of these unfamiliar words in a text. So the first thing I would always encourage you to do is look at the parts of the word. So a word can be made up of smaller parts known as roots. And you might have had a teacher that talked a lot about prefixes and suffixes. And those roots can give you clues about the meaning of the word. So for example, you might have learned that bi, by, means to. So if you think about words you know that have the root by, like bicycle, it has the number two somehow associated with it, right? Because bicycles have two wheels. Now, if you don't know a lot of roots, don't worry. Another strategy that sometimes works is if you read a word and it reminds you of another word, that might give you a clue to its meaning. Because if you're reading a word and it reminds you of another word, there's a possibility that they might have a root in common so that you might be able to make a guess about what that unfamiliar word means based on the word that it sounds like. It doesn't always work, but it's another trick to try. The second tip I would suggest you do is really break down the sentence. Start to think about a sentence like a puzzle. Sure, there might be one word you don't know, but there are a bunch of words you do know. So you wanna ask yourself, what can I learn about this unfamiliar word based on how it's used or based on all the other things that are happening in this sentence. So really do a deep dive into the sentence and take a look at what's happening and try to figure out, does it lead you to any conclusions about your unfamiliar word? The third tip is to hunt for clues. So sometimes when you're reading and you encounter a word you don't know, the author will actually define that word for you. People do this when they're speaking too. So in class, sometimes I will ask students to remove all superfluous materials from their desk. But I will often say, because I know a lot of kids don't know what superfluous means, I'll say, remove all superfluous or unnecessary items from your desk. So I'm giving kids who don't know what the word superfluous means a clue by defining it right next to that word. So look for definitions that might be in the sentence to help you define the unfamiliar word. Another thing to keep an eye open for are synonyms and antonyms. So synonyms are words that mean something similar and antonyms are words that mean the opposite. So if you have your unfamiliar word right next to another word, or maybe there's a word and then the word and an unfamiliar word, you can pick up on a clue of what does your unfamiliar word mean based on the words next to it that, that might be something similar, might have a similar meaning. Or if you're picking up that there's some kind of contrast in the text, maybe you'll have some clues because you'll see some antonyms in the text. So just be looking for the language in the sentence for clues. The fourth tip is to think about connotative meaning. And connotations are the words, feelings, associations that we have with a word. So if you can kind of figure out, is this unfamiliar word a positive word? Does it have positive connotations or is it a negative word? Does it have negative connotations? That'll help you get closer to finding the definition. And then last but not least, once you've kind of used some of these tips and then you think you have a good guess, either a word or a phrase that you can substitute for your unfamiliar word, then you can put your educated guess into the sentence to see if it works. And if it works, great. If not, you might have to go back to the text and do a little bit more digging. So let's take a look at an example. This is an excerpt from The Giver um, in StudySync. And in StudySync, there are bold words. And every time students hit a bold word, they're supposed to stop, use context clues to define that word and make an educated guess about what they think that word means. So let's listen to the excerpt and then we'll use some of these tips to figure out if we can define the unfamiliar word. Hmm. 
Excerpt from chapter two. Jonas Shiver. He pictured his father, who must have been a shy and quiet boy, for he was a shy and quiet man, seated with his group, waiting to be called to the stage. The ceremony of twelve was the last of the ceremonies, the most important. I remember how proud my parents looked, and my sister too, even though she wanted to be out riding the bicycle publicly. She stopped fidgeting and was very still and attentive when my turn came. Okay. So the bold word in that sentence is attentive. So we want to lean on our first tip. Maybe you look at this word and you think, I don't know of any roots in that word. But I immediately think of another word when I read the word attentive. It makes me think of the word attention. So that's my first tip, thinking about what words sound similar Maybe it gives me a clue about the meaning. So it sounds like the word attention. The second tip is to kind of dive into the, the sentences themselves, the text itself, and really break apart the sentence and look for clues. So I was immediately drawn to this first part where it talks about how proud his parents looked and how proud his sister looked too. He also points out that his sister would much rather be riding a bike, but in this moment, she's not doing that. She's with the parents. So these are two important clues in the sentence that will help me to figure out what the word attentive means. Another thing I noticed is we have stopped fidgeting, was still, and attentive, all linked by the words and. That makes me think that those words have a relationship. So if she stopped fidgeting, so she stopped moving, she was very still, and she was attentive. It makes me think that maybe fidgeting, still, and attentive are very closely related. Then I want to think about connotations. Well, I know that her parents, uh, the parents, Jonas's parents, excuse me, and his sister are really proud. So I'm going to guess that the word attentive is a positive word, that it has positive connotations because this is a really positive moment where everybody's together and, and the family is very proud. So I'm going to take a guess and try my fifth tip, which is to replace the bold word with my educated guess. So I'm going to guess that the word attentive means interested. So, or, so I could plug that in. She stopped fidgeting and was very still and interested when my turn came. That fits. Uh, or watching closely. She stopped fidgeting and was very still and watched closely when my turn came. So when I fill both of those in, I actually think watching or watch closely is probably the best educated guess for what the word attentive means. But again, I was able to figure it out by thinking about root words or what the word sounds like, looking really looking at the language of the text, thinking about synonyms in this case, but synonyms and antonyms, considering connotations, and then taking a guess and filling in the sentence to see what works. So hopefully that will help you guys so that you can practice trying to define unfamiliar words. Because for those of you who are gonna be taking the SAT, this is definitely a skill that you need. All of the vocabulary is used in context in the SAT. So the more you practice this, the better you'll get at doing it.